just a beautiful moment with Natalie Pinkman and Nico Rosberg. Uh, oh from, yeah, for, yeah. From you, you, yeah, you Nico. That, right? Nico seems to be just like stirring the shit mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. I love it. I mean, I I I love it because he really no one shows him any quarter. When, yeah. You know, when, when he, he leaves himself like available or open, uh, it just really is like a, like everyone will take a shot at him. Uh, and it's, it's glorious. I, tr- I truly do love that. Yeah. Um, do you, did you, yeah, yeah. Um, let's, why don't, why don't we, we get into, let's, let's steamroll straight into it. Uh, yeah. let's try to keep it brief because I'm unfortunately I'm fading fast yes. and uh, I'm gonna try and uh, get my get my yeah. energy up here. <laughs> oh, oh boy! Ah, <laughs> oh, a little stretch. That's <laughs> ah. right. How this is Ugh. just exactly the the exact move that you do right before you fall asleep, John. This is exactly <laughs> what you you know, always done. I don't know what you're talking class. about. <laughs> yes, arms arms very quickly up around the throat to protect Dracula bites. Uh, yeah, the All whole. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh perfect uh well that's that sets the perfect tone for us to roll directly into the podcast <laughs> You're let's, uh, let's, let's let's do it get uh, into a yeah. little auto narcoleptic asphyxiation uh yes. and, and everything yeah let's yeah. uh let's go let the g-forces uh get so intense that they make you pass out that's right uh, that's it right. Welcome to the F1 Files, folks. This is our Formula One podcast. It's just a couple of best friends who are uh, huge fans of Formula One and also oh so sleepy. Uh, I also (laughs) woke up (laughs) a little bit early today. Uh, One of the hosts, my name is Corey Willis. I'm a writer, actor, improviser out here in Los Angeles, California. And this is John Lepore, creative consultant up way past his bedtime. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. So mm-hmm. Formula One, we've got a off weekend following we the sensational uh, Ferrari win at mm-hmm. Monza. Uh, we're screaming into Baku, though. It's already race week once again. Yep. And we've got a few different things happening in and around the paddock as uh, some of the season stories just keep unfolding. Um, Corey, where where do you want to start? What's uh, what do you what do you think is is headline this week? Uh, well, I still think that we're feeling the the after the after effects of the uh, the McLaren kind of like. <sighs> like stumbling across the finish line at Monza in the Mm -hmm. second and third spots. I think there's still a lot of that happening out there. I know Will Buxton had this like impassioned uh, speech at the end of the Grand Prix that we didn't end up talking about uh, that where he just like lays into McLaren and like, yeah, tell the producers trying to like, get him to move on and he just will not stop. Um, yeah. Cause he's, he's like mad about it. And I will gets a lot of guff, but I think that that kind of passion from a commentator perfectly expresses like every fan of McLaren just being like, what are you doing? Why are we, why are we ruining our own chances here? Um, yeah. So I think that that's still in the air. That's lingering a little bit, but uh, but we we have to talk about Adrian Newey and what what is the impending announcement uh, of Adrian Newey and like 
what's behind that. We're going to talk a little bit about Red Bulls uh, sliding deeper into the porta potty uh, as they like yep. rush in and don't check to see if the seat's down and they just are sliding backwards down into a, a ghastly tank of awfulness, where, which they deserve to be in. Absolutely deserve yep. to be in. Um, yep. And then uh, we'll, we'll touch on a little, a little good hearted Oliver Behrman news towards, towards the end here. Um, but yeah, let's, I, I do want to get kind of your thoughts on what, what you felt uh, as, as a fan of the sport and what you've like witnessed over the past week when it comes to like McLaren, if like any of your buddies are, uh, are talking about that um, and like the neighborhood dads uh, action. So I think everybody's got a little bit of that sentiment of like McLaren, how dare you not perfectly optimize your chances to, you know, really battle in the, driver's championship this year um mm -hmm. i still sort of appreciate a little bit of the notion of like zach brown's just letting them go for it but that's probably not what's actually happening there's probably been some sort of failure within the team that zach brown is passing off as if zach brown's mm -hmm. letting the the drivers just fight it out amongst themselves um yeah. And yeah, it does seem like we're, you know, we're basically already fast into a sort of like toxic era between Lando and Oscar, right? Mm -hmm. I think we were anticipating this kicking into gear maybe as early as last season when yeah. it didn't it didn't really take off in that way. I think now we've slotted directly into that. Uh, as you might expect, I'm here for it. Let these yes. guys duke it out. Let there be a little drama. Let it be a little like, you know, sensational. Let it be a little bit frazzling, particularly mm -hmm. for Lando, who seems like he's more on the back foot than drivers much farther down the grid are. Yes. Because he's, you know, possibly getting completely completely outclassed by his uh his his youthful teammate mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know it's uh it's interesting to see um i'm here for it what's uh yeah. what's your feelings what do you, where do you think i mean like it does seem as though like there's been just momentum almost in like f1 zeitgeist what have you seen this week uh well i mean it's it's not so much what i've seen as much as like a, a bit of like a like I I want to I want to like take a step back and like think about the way that this is being handled uh as as it relates to like Oscar and Lando and the way that Zach Brown is being forced to manage those two drivers who are two in essence number one drivers like I do understand his sentiment where he's like, we only have two number one drivers. We do not have a number two driver. Yeah. And I think that for all... Of we we only have two drivers with really good agents or management. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think there's like, as folksy as Zach Brown is, I think that he is a very calculated businessman. And he also has yeah. Stella running his team, who is like a yeah. notoriously brilliant technical uh, designer Maniac. and yeah. Main, yeah, yeah, just like a mad scientist. Uh, and yep. the, I think that, I, like, I, I was thinking today as I was getting getting ready to to sit down, if there is this like weird math that's being done at McLaren, right? this that they could potentially be going like okay well lando does just have to eat into max's lead by eight points per grand prix for the rest of the year in order to get them on level pegging at abu dhabi so i want to like i don't think this is what's happening but i have this like 
sneaking little conspiracy like tickle that's going like hey is are they being managed kind of perfectly is this deliberate is this a way to keep oscar happy allow him to continue to try and fight for it as long as we play this like perfect you know like uh like Doctor Strange esque, like I've seen all possible outcomes, and like this is how yeah. we win, kind of thing. Like, is maybe that is what's happening here, and we're just being fooled by Zach Brown's folksiness, maybe. Uh, but then I also am like, that's this is the first time I've ever even like considered that as being like a real possibility. So it's probably nothing. Like the fact that like it hasn't been floated by anybody else or no one else is going like, no, McLaren is playing this like perfectly with one foreseeable outcome. Because uh, that I think anyone with any sort of knowledge around this sport goes, there are too many variables to try to to like count on one outcome. Like mm-hmm. everyone has to finish every single race. Like there needs to be like a certain amount of like virtual safety cars versus actual safety car. Like it, there are so many variables. So yeah, I don't know. It, it does. I want to believe that though. I do want to believe it. It feels right to believe that, that there's like a kernel of a, of a conspiracy there at McLaren where they're like, we actually got this. We know what's coming. And mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're ready for it are you uh yeah so but the zeitgeist sounds like they're just like shredding mclaren apart and just being like your strategy's terrible you're fumbling this championship you're not even going to win the constructors championship now i've heard a few people talk about ferrari being a contender for the constructor championship too and i was like yeah this is abs- i firmly yeah. believe that ferrari is in this in this championship again so so i like the idea that zach and andreas are are playing you know 4d chess or doing Mm -hmm. some sort of like carbon fiber voodoo behind the scenes to you know drive their destiny to to a whole other plane of existence Mm -hmm. um there is somebody else in the paddock who has a Ouija board that they are maximizing the hell out of, or a voodoo doll, or actually, it's none of those things. It's just money. It's just <laughs> gobs and gobs of money yeah. that they are smearing all over everything. They have yes. a, a halfway decent operation, but there's some holes in it, and they're literally just like, smothering it with yes. money like possibly to the point where like the weight of the currency could make it collapse on itself rather and like you know it's like literally like someone who like goes into mm-hmm. the emergency room with an open bullet wound and the doctor's just like how about i just try and cram 500 dollars bills into that wound will that <laughs> fix it I was told that money can solve anything. <laughs> yes. Is this is what clearly what they meant and uh you know yeah. so I'm I'm curious to see if there will be a literal impact here or if this will just be an exercise in like well you know money also has to be combined with direction and you know a clever strategy but of course I'm speaking about Lawrence Stroll mm-hmm. and Aston Martin um mm-hmm. The we've known this has been coming for a little while, and it's all but official that Tuesday morning of this week it will be formally announced that Adrian Newey is joining Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. Um, the news has also circulated. Uh, like I I guess we're we're pretty much I'm gonna say we've crossed out of rumor zone. And this yeah. is just accurate leaks. I believe the BBC themselves reported that uh, this is happening. And and mm-hmm. not only is it Nui's going to Aston, Nui is going for five years. Yes. Um, worth $30 million a year or a yes. $150 million contract. Yeah. Thirty million dollars a year. 
I mean, I think it's appropriate. This guy deserves every penny he can get. But it is sure. worth noting that $30 million a year will make Adrian Newey the fourth highest paid human being in Formula One immediately yeah. after Verstappen, Hamilton, and Leclerc. And he's almost beating Leclerc for yeah. third place of you know highest paid person in the sport. Yeah. Uh, I believe it also makes him one of the highest paid people of like British origin in global sports period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and is pretty, pretty wild all for uh, a dude with a clipboard. Yeah. Uh, a clipboard and a, and a notebook and a spiral notebook. Um, yep. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm happy that Nui is going to remain in the sport because I think that he is an asset in Formula One. And I think no matter where he is, he drives technology forward. Um, he this is like he goes against like the basic logic of uh, Enzo Ferrari himself, where he's like, you know, uh, aerodynamics are for people who cannot build uh, engines is like a literal thing that Ferrari used to say when people are like, well, what about Williams? What about, you know, what, what about McLaren? What about like, you know, all these teams, what about Benetton? Like, what about all these teams that are like really dominating in the aerodynamic department? He was wildly dismissive of them. And I think he's like the, that the sport has been turned, not turned around, but aerodynamics have just as much of an influence on like the trickle down technology that shows up in road cars now as the engines used to. And as like, you know, these engines would get put into these, you know, hyper cars and super cars uh, back in the day. And now these engines are like V6 turbo V sixes. Um, so it's like, there's a turbo V6 in most cars that people drive. Uh, it's really not like that big of a deal anymore to be like, I have F1 engine technology in my car, but like to be like, I have active aerodynamics is like a new bragging point now for like that, that stage of like luxury vehicle, um, which is like, it yep. speaks volumes. Uh, so I think Adrian Newey is as an asset to the sport. I really wish she was going to Ferrari. Absolutely wish he was going to Ferrari because obviously I want to see him paired with Hamilton and Loic Sarah and Leclerc and under Fred Vassar. But I mean, I just can't. Yeah. I can't, I, I still have a difficult time accepting that he was just like, you know, this guy who's got, untold wealth at this point from the sport mm -hmm. chose the the big bucks coming from Lawrence Stroll and then eating British food as opposed yeah. to relocating to Marinello yeah. and being a part of the most like romantic thing in motorsports. I just yeah. just for the pasta alone. I I now question his judgment, but then again, yes. you know, clearly Nui's a special breed. I probably couldn't process anything inside of his notebook. And so, yeah. you know, who am I to to question his decision making process, his hyperclinical mind when it comes to this sort of stuff? Um Maybe forever a lost opportunity, but yeah, you know, yeah. maybe it's also the beginning of a Lance Stroll renaissance, <laughs> the hey. likes of the which nobody could have even imagined or anticipated. Ima Imagine if that's what happens here. Imagine Lance if Stroll, truly. four time world drivers champion. 2025 yeah. through 2029. 
yeah, retires the sport at the top of his game as one of the the biggest, you know, uh, turnarounds in respect that anyone mm-hmm. has ever received in the sport. Gets a yeah. voice transplant after his <laughs> first driver's championship. Yes, so that he yes. doesn't sound like Kermit the Frog when he's getting yes. all excited. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, who knows? Sports yeah. got lots of twists and turns, Corey. The season is already surprising us and catching us on the back foot. It really is. It really is. So what what do you think? You you had mentioned something about like the the finances here. The one of the reasons why Adrian Newey might be able to go to Aston Martin is because of uh like this he's, you know, Lawrence Stroll is a financial behemoth. But you were saying that he made some other moves here that Yeah, kind of, so uh it came yeah. out just a couple days ago that um they've got two new investors buying a pretty hefty stake in mm-hmm. the team like i want to say it's like somewhere around like 20% of the team is going to two new like you know holding companies or whatnot that are joining forces and so this is just like pumping up value in the team uh, the team's valuation based on this investment and the percentage um, pumped in to the mm-hmm. team, which I think it was, I think this new injection of money is like, it's like $1.8 billion or something like that. It's and so that money. brings the valuation of the Aston Martin F1 team to $9 billion. Dollars or sorry, that might be euros. Uh, close enough. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah. Insane. When we're, when we're up valuation up, up for at this those team. numbers, I feel like nine billion <laughs> euros versus nine billion dollars. I'm like, you know what? Those are two numbers that I would I can't process. So yeah, sure, I, I describe that as like that's the difference between like jumping out the you know the window on the 75th floor and jumping out the window on the 80th floor of the building. It it is like, it really doesn't genuinely will not make an impact, uh, that is discernible to anyone. Uh, Um, so, so yeah, yeah, I mean, crazy money flowing into the team, probably another trigger in a sort of like team valuation arms race that I would mm -hmm. expect to see continue forward and i'm pretty sure all of this is all you know all of it is set to just basically be this this sort of game that i think everybody's playing where they're expecting that like i don't know maybe in five years maybe in 20 years maybe in two years saudi arabia just buys the sport as a whole sport yeah yeah everything buys every single piece of it and so Every, yeah. you know, every investor out there is still itching to get a little skin in this game before yes. some colossal deal goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, oh, in the realm of, uh, of, of sponsors and as a pivot out and away from the devastating news that we're going to be losing Adrian Newey to, uh, to to full english breakfasts instead of yeah uh, full full english breakfasts and kermit yeah. the frog yeah uh instead of like the finest cuisine on the planet and uh some of the most relaxing and serene surroundings you can imagine um let, let's go to franco calopinto this man is bringing a ton of sponsorship money to williams uh yeah. and uh, James Vowles came out and said, he's like, you know, he's a lot faster than people realize. And I think that this now kind of triggers uh, some warning bells, I think, for Alex Albon, where Alex Albon, if he does start to get outpaced in that Williams, his seat does become a bit of uh, a, a less sure thing, even though you know, 
Fowles has said, like Alex Albon has resigned and he's part of like a long term goal and a long term vision and all this and that. It's kind of like, hey, if Carlos Sainz comes in and like mops the floor with you next year after uh, Calo Pinto like right. matches you this year, it like starts to maybe interest Calo Pinto, you know, uh, in in getting that seat back. Um, yep. So we'll we'll see. Well, I, I think that that's an interesting thing. Uh, and he's their also, own own version of the the implication game. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which, who knows if that guy is going to get a seat in in F one this year, this coming year? Ideally, the implication. New we're, we're talking about Liam Lawson, folks. Uh, he is the implication there at, at RB and and Red Bull. Still interested to see what's going on with him um, because there was a picture of Sergio Perez uh, sitting at dinner with like daddy Red Bull himself, uh, the homeboy Vidya um, of like mm-hmm. the Thai Vidyas, like sitting at yep. dinner with Checo and his wife. And it's uh, that's like a that's a wild thing to be doing. You're having dinner with like the boss of all bosses uh, and your seat is in jeopardy. It's that it's a, it's a, that's a bold proclamation um, for the, the head of Red Bull to be making um, just because everyone's been so like, you know, Sergio's going to lose his seat. Sergio's going to lose his seat. And it's like, if, if video decides, no, Sergio is not going to go, then Sergio is not going to go. So, I think that that's that was a a pretty hefty blow to the implications. Like, like, ooh, baby, I'm gonna get into a Red Bull. Oh, wait, he's having dinner with the boss. I'm not having dinner with the boss. Oh boy, that's yeah, that's not good. Um, Says a lot right there. It really does. It really, really does. Um, Which is unfortunate for Liam Lawson because I think he does deserve a seat. Um, Just like. Franco Calapinto deserves a seat, uh, it, it would seem. Um, he also is a bit of a cheeky one. Uh, on uh, on his social media, he like retweeted some pictures from like uh, from someone holding like a sign that was upside down with his name on it, um, and like retweeted it, and like not even retweeted it, like went in and like edited it and turned it upside down so that like the whole crowd is upside down, but the, like the Franco Calapinto sign is right side up. Uh, and then like, you know, posted it. Uh, and he's like done some other kind of like silly stuff with his social media. He, he popped on to be like, Hey, just so you know, folks, um, now that I'm a, I'm an F1 driver, we've got a social media manager who's going to take over this account. And then like quite, immediately afterwards was like, ha ha ha, just kidding. There's no way I'll ever give up this social media account. Uh, I am holding on to it forever uh, or whatever it was. Uh, so I, I like nice. him as like a person. Um, he was also on the post race show and was like, you know, I, I love a long talker. Uh, and that dude talked way too long uh, on the post race show. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he like showed up like, uh, like rolling his shoulder being like i am in so much pain and then like talk to them for like 10 minutes uh, while like his like person was trying to get him off camera um so i, I like i like Calapinto. um let's talk about red bull johnny god let's talk about red bull <sighs> boiling just a boiling vat of actual red bull the product that they sell the the yellow fizzy caffeinated drink but boiling that tastes like flintstones level is tastes like flintstones vitamins (laughs) uh encourages bad decisions Mm -hmm. and that level of boiling fizzy piss drink is just getting higher and higher yes it is soaking every person who comes into contact with it with with uh, like a sticky stench that they'll never be able to get rid of um it's just i i love how toxic that that place has become i love yep. that helmet marco 
has like repeatedly come out in interviews and been like, we have a real problem here. We do not know how to fix it. It is uh, like a fundamental issue with the car. We are all noticing it on everyone's data and we don't know how to fix it. I love this, John. I love this so much. It makes me so happy. I want. I don't necessarily want to see Sergio Perez suffer, but I do want to see every other person in that team suffer. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, Sergio. You're you're catching the biggest stray of all. Uh, but also, you had dinner with like the big boss the other night. So, like, I kind of don't even. You, whatever. You're fine. Um, uh, I'm not worried about you. But I I love that. Basically, it feels like they've finally reached the same like development ceiling or like are running into the same fundamental floor issues or whatever issues, aerodynamic issues that Mercedes faced straight out of the gate with their like teardrop uh, design. So like Mm -hmm. it seems as though like Red Bull being kind of like the trolls of all trolls trying to make this car that looked kind of like the Mercedes zero pod, but they like inverted the inlets on the side pods and made them overbites instead of underbites and made these side slits. And now they are running into the same issue that Mercedes ran into where they were like, Hey, if we run the car, like we've been running it in the simulator, we cannot control the rear end of the vehicle anymore. And mm, if that's not the most delightful thing ever, I don't, I don't know what is. I mean, Christian, change your car. Change your car. It's simple. That's it. Oh, that's it. Oh God, it's so. It is delightful. It's so good, and the thing with Mercedes is that they were able to basically bring James Allison back into the fold. And be like, hey, look, we need you. Um, yeah. Can you stop like designing boats for a little while and come back and fix our car? And uh, Red Bull doesn't have that option. They don't have anyone. Certainly not Adrian Newey, who is going to show back up with like a rubber mallet and a chisel and just like go to work. Uh, that's not... That's not how this is going to work. They're not. Go- they don't have anyone, and I kind of love it. I mean, yep. I lo- I love that Wheatley's like all but gone. He's going to be gone. Like he'll be on gardening leave within the next like few months, so he's not really going to be able to help them allocate the right people even. So like they're losing, like a like. Oh God, I love it. I love it. They're every mechanism that they have in order to recover from this is basically already gone like hey this company sucks and i don't like working for it <laughs> i'm gonna go work for someone else ah that's that's beautiful that's beautiful i know i'm absolutely trashing any chance i ever have of working for red bull uh ever again but eh, you know whatever uh, they, they seem so toxic Get it's uh yeah, it's get rid of them. It's it's worth it. The the yeah. the joy in watching them sort of you know tread the boiling uh, boiling caffeinated beverage is uh, mm-hmm. it's just delightful. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. I like it a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Christian Horner's even said like, eh, we don't know. Well, yeah, there's a problem. Like no one in that camp is going like, no, no, we got this under control. Everyone is full on, like hands up. Like I don't know, what, I don't know what to do. Uh, so I guess what they are doing is they're taking money from next year's car, the development of the twenty twenty five car, because basically the twenty five car is supposed to just follow on the design of the twenty four car. That's what every f1 team is doing they're not radically changing their car in the last year of a development cycle like that just makes no sense 
Yep. So they need to take all the money and all the resources that they have dedicated to their 2025 car and go, well, let's pump the brakes here uh, because maybe we are like those brakes are going to be in a different place. We don't know. We genuinely don't know what we're doing next year with the car. So like we got to maybe figure out what we got to do this year to fix the car because they are in a constructor's championship. Like they, they, they might end up third. Like I said this last week, they may end up third in the constructor's championship. How sweet. It would be phenomenal. Would that be phenomenal? I like my God. Uh, But that's honestly what it kind of looks like is going to happen to them is they are going to probably end up third in the constructors championship because Ferrari's not going to slow down. This Monza package worked for them, even though maybe it's not the best package for every single track going forward. The parts worked like they were supposed to work. They fixed their porpoising issue. They fixed their bouncing issue. Uh, Mercedes is bringing several upgrades. McLaren is bringing more upgrades in the next couple of weeks. So, and Red Bull sucks at Singapore. They're terrible Mm -hmm. at that track. They are bad because they cannot ride curbs because their suspension is too stiff. And now they have a suspension that's too stiff and a floor that makes the back end of their car freak out. They're not going to be able to compete in Singapore. They'll be lucky to score points in Singapore, quite frankly. Which, again, oh, I I can't, I can't believe we're even talking about this right now, John. Like they might not. Delicious, it's delicious. I love it. uh, Keep it, keep it coming. Come on, guys, just dissolve even, even faster. I'm now saying Christian Horner, stay in that job, no matter what anybody tells you. You need to keep that job, hold on to that job, never leave um, until Red Bull is like smoldering in awful, sticky, piss smelling <laughs> red Flintstones. Yeah. Yep. Ugh, God. Ugh. Um, all right. Well, Let's get into some some good news here. Let's get into some lighthearted news. How about that? Lay, lay it on me. So we've got uh, Kevin Magnuson with a, a single race ban, uh, which, yes, that doesn't sound like good news, but it is good news. I mean, that sounds terrible. Like, that sounds catastrophic. Yeah. Like, that hasn't happened in the sport in a while yeah roman groshan was the last person yeah in 2012 i think yeah something he, like that because he couldn't stop o- right. <laughs> after almost decapitating fernando alonso <laughs> literally literally um, literally yeah. that's literally what happened uh ugh. and uh and also just fascinating because k mag seems to just be taking it all in stride like k mag seems yeah. to be like yeah who else you see in putting up penalty points like this look at me it's great this man like last at the last grand prix at monza helped with a championship point to help like have his constructor team jump ahead i think that they're now ahead of williams and like the the constructors points uh because of k mag because of his contribution uh and he's got a race ban he got a race ban when he helped his team go over the the next highest uh, ranking team, which is like mm-hmm. tens of millions of dollars into their team's pockets. Like it's it's a it's not just like a bragging rights thing. It's like a really like, K okay, Mag, you're really helping the team out, and they are not bringing you back next year. So he returns after Baku with zero penalty points and no contract next year, and I think it's the funniest thing ever that yeah we are now going to see like a potentially completely untethered kevin magnuson yep uh but that's not the In news the meantime here. yeah the news here is we've got oliver bearman who is going to be one of the replacements there at uh haas like he is going to be replacing one of the drivers at haas next year um, 
even though you know Kevin Magnuson is not coming back and Nico Hulkenberg is going to Sauber, like Oliver Behrman is a signed driver for Haas. So he's going to be in there for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, it's going to be really tough for him because this is only his second Grand Prix. This is really kind of like difficult to go from F2 to F1. Meanwhile, he scored points on his debut at Jeddah, one of the hardest tracks, the fastest tracks on the calendar, the one that no one else has experience with either. So it makes it even more dangerous of a track. In one of the most chaotic races of the past few seasons of as the well. Past few, yeah, like it really is like he'll be okay all by that, all just with that in mind. But the fact that he's now racing at Azerbaijan, where in 2023, he had like a full on like history making weekend where in F2, like it doesn't happen. You don't win both races. Like if that does happen, it's like usually because there's like a reverse grid situation or something like that is like, or there's been like a safety car or something has happened to cause someone to win two races in one weekend in F2. Not only did he win both races in Baku, but I believe that he was pole and fastest lap as well. Um, or maybe maybe he didn't win both races. Now I can't fully remember. Now I'm doubting my own my, my own knowledge here. But he scored incredibly well. Maybe he had like a huge comeback from like a, a, a back marker placement uh, on the weekend. Either way, he has had a phenomenal record at this track. He does very, very well there. So I think that Oliver Behrman is going to come in and he's going to outscore Nico Hulkenberg. I think he's going to potentially even outqualify him because the last time he was in a qualifying car, he was in a Ferrari and he qualified, I think, like eighth or something like that. So it's like he's got a Ferrari powered car. He's got a Haas with... Yep a decent aero package that has good qualifying pace. Nico Hulkenberg has repeatedly been in the top 10 for, I think the past six grand prix in qualifying. So like the Haas has qualifying pace. It doesn't necessarily have race pace, but it does have good qualifying pace. And I think that we're going to see Oliver Behrman just come in and build properly build himself over an F1 weekend. The, now he stepped into free practice three, and qualifying at Jeddah and still qualified in the top 10. He, because that was when Carlos Sainz had his appendix out. So Carlos Sainz drove for free practice one and free practice two. So Oliver Behrman hasn't even done a full weekend. He hasn't built himself up. So I think if he builds himself up in this car, he's going to score some serious points. I mean, I, I know this is very bold to say, but like there's usually, or not usually there have been, safety cars at Azerbaijan. We could see Oliver Behrman challenging the top five if a safety car situation happens and he's already up wow. there. I I truly believe it. I know it's that's a crazy bold prediction, but it's pretty bold, but I think I think you've got something there. I think we'll see him I think we'll see him make everybody proud. Uh yeah. I yeah. also just can't get over how much I'm enjoying that this season we're getting these sort of like pre album release mixtapes of yep. various drivers and just getting it. a sampling I of really some new talent, especially because we're starting to get to a point where like granted, um, granted the, you know, getting into F1, the age is lowering lower and lower we do seem to have like an especially mature grid at the moment yes. for this generation. And not that there's that many people that I'm eager to see disappear or retire. Um, it is interesting to start to see some young blood get more in the mix here. So keep it, keep it yeah. coming. I want to see more Ollie Berman. I want to see, I want to figure out how we get Liam Lawson back yeah. into a car. 
maybe he'll drive in the Sauber opposite Kevin Magnuson. May, I mean, maybe that is that that was like a rumor that circulated earlier yeah. this week. Maybe that is what happens. I mean, I don't care if he's in a back marker car. I just think he needs to be on that grid. He's like proved yep. it. Um, I'm also very interested to see what goes on with Alpine going forward because my God, that, that team is, is in some weird, is in a very weird situation. Uh, where like Luca DeMeo, the guy who runs Renault and Alpine, um, was like, I have no interest whatsoever in selling my F1 team to anyone. Yeah. Which normally I'd be like, ah, I don't know. That sounds a little, hmm. But it's like a, you know, Renault slash Alpine is like a proud French brand. And when like French people. Yeah make bold proclamations they don't usually do them lightheartedly it's usually them setting up a whole bunch of bad decisions that are tied to them just sticking to their guns basically yes. yeah yes so uh i think that alpine is going to stay under the like shadow puppet leadership of flavio briatori um with with oliver oaks running the team sort of um but basically just doing whatever Briatori tells him to do. And like Briatori is going to tell Luca DeMeo how he's going to run the team. And I think Luca is going to be like, eh, sure. Why not? As long as, long as you don't sell my team, you could keep my team. I don't know. Um, I think that's, that's where, that's where they're at. I uh I think it's tail spinning towards the ocean, but I think right before impact, it's gonna like turn into a party boat and mm-hmm. everything will be just fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are straight up like engine, like they're testing their 2026 engine at the end of this year. Like that's still happening, even though they're like scrapping their wow. engine program. Yeah. They're still like, yep, we're testing the 2025 engine. It's like why why what are you doing why are you test- what, what's happening you're just wasting money now I don't know. Uh, whatever they're a manufacturer they can do whatever they want um uh, up to and including sell to andretti if they ever wanted to if they ever wanted to all right johnny anything else from this week anything else you're looking forward to uh coming up here in baku Oh, I'm just looking forward to the race in general. Fun to yeah. see cars rip around this uh, tight, yeah. super like almost Monaco esque circuit where there's like zero margin for error. To me, that's mm-hmm. always entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Love and to there's see now the... a dramatically smaller likelihood of a safety car now that Logan Sargent is. Not going to be anywhere near Baku. Yeah, that's it's a shame. That's a shame. Um, that is not an open invitation or a challenge to Franco Calapinto. Uh, um, I can't. I can't see him making any of the same mistakes that Logi Sargi made. Uh, <sighs> God. Um, also, the the longest and fastest straight on the calendar. I think it, this this has the. I want to say Valtteri Bottas still holds like the 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 speed record at uh, on that straight uh, back right. when he was in the the greatest Mercedes to ever touch planet Earth. Yep. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for this race coming up. I think it's been a nice little blip of a break. Didn't let too many people do too many stupid things, except for. <sighs> I don't, I'm not calling Adrian Newey stupid. I think that the move to Aston Martin may not have been the move that we all would have wanted to see him make. But he's Adrian Newey. He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. Um, uh, and technically, that decision hasn't been made and it won't be made until Tuesday morning GMT or whatever the time stamp is over there. Yep. All right, buddy. Um, where do you think the uh, the stock is for F1 right now? I think the stock is, uh, I'm going to say it's 
it's on a gentle incline, just on the momentum of a beautiful red car winning at Monza last weekend. I think that's just that leaves an echo of some really nice vibes for the yeah. sport. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think I also think that there's there's a bit of a blip. It's on a bit of an incline here. We've got um, uh, we we had a, a beautiful sentiment on an Instagram story from Lewis Hamilton about the fact that it was his last time in like the Mercedes motor home because it's like the, the this was the last race uh, on the European leg and yep. that's where they use the Mercedes motor home. So he's like, you know, for the past 12 years I've, you know, this has been where I go after races. This is like the engineering debrief room. This is my like private room. This is like, kind of been a home to me and it's just weird that it's not gonna be my home anymore so it was like a nice little moment there like a an actual human moment um for f1 which i think is always helpful and more often than not it's delivered by lewis hamilton um whether it's as an ambassador to f1 or not it it ultimately does fall on his shoulders when he does something like that uh it's like wow look at this human being being a human being and being sentimental about moving on to a new chapter like me a human being who's also sentimental about moving on to new chapters it's it's good it's good for the sport lewis hamilton is good for the sport what what, that's not a big news story but that is the constant news story um all right well johnny where can the folks find you out there in the world or online you can track me down via my business black box infinite Corey, where can the folks find you? Uh, you can track me down. I'm Corey P. Willis dot com. Uh, also, burn Corey Burn on all the socials, the F1 files on Twitter, on TikTok, and the F1 files pod on Instagram. Uh, I'm also going to be hosting uh, a show, a jam, which is like an open mic, but for improvisers uh, for levels one and two on uh, Thursday, the 12th at 9 p.m. Uh, oh, at nice. UCB Annex. So uh, come through if you're if you're a student or been in those levels, uh, or you can just come and watch and just clap and laugh and guffaw and have your heartstrings pulled or plucked when someone says something that's like true. Uh, but yeah, check me out. All those spaces. Uh, you will catch up with us the next time just like we're going to catch up with you the next time on these F1 files.